You're listening to the Lou Stokes Podcast, real and inspiring conversations with individuals from all over the world who have become their own icon. Be inspired to take action and step into your best stylish life. Hi, and welcome to the Lou Stokes Podcast. On today's episode, I am lucky to have Pilar Lakavi with me. Pilar is a mindset and life coach and also an NLP professional. Hi, Pilar, welcome. Hi, how you doing, Lou? Great, thank you. And you? Very good, very good. Amazing. Sunny. Sunny. Yeah. Lucky you, Sunny Ibiza. Here it's raining in Madrid. (laughs) So, Pilar, why don't you tell us a bit more about yourself? I mean, we know each other from a long time ago. We used to work together in Hugo Boss, and your life has completely changed. And now (laughs) you're a coach. So, yeah, just give us a bit of a background on what you're, what you're doing now and how you ended up, like what led you to become a coach? Okay, so um, actually I studied psychology okay. seven years ago and I did a, uh, a master's degree in personal development, mm-hmm. although um, life took me towards the career in fashion, okay, when they ended up leading at the end of 20 years, leading like a huge team of uh, international people, mainly women, And when I realized that what I liked the most in my job was to mentor and to help grow these women and their lives and their careers, actually, I kind of like realized that was my purpose. That's what I really wanted to do one day. And that's what I worked towards to do. So I studied, I mean, I took all the new certifications. I did life coach um, certified by... International Coaching Federation. I did my master practitioner in NLP and I did many other courses about um, hypnosis and anything to do with transformational life, energy, et cetera, et cetera. And um, Amazing. I took the leap, a jump, and I decided to do this uh, full-time job. Amazing. Amazing. So what, you know, who, who are your clients? Women, you talked before how you mainly worked with women in the last, you know, you were leading women mainly. Is that who you mainly work with, women? Yeah. Yeah. Like, because I I realised, you know, I, I did a lot of work on myself, I for sure. I mean, I think to be able to help someone, you have to work a lot on yourself. And I realised that I am a massive feminist. <laughs> <laughs> Love not it. in the sense, not in the sense of like, you know, taking my bra off and, you know, all yeah. these kind yeah. of thing, but like, you know, being born in such a traditional culture mm-hmm. and all the culture by society, mm-hmm. kind of like, you know, a bit posh, a bit upper class society in the south of Spain, mm-hmm. I felt all my life very restrictive with all this very um, patriotism, you yeah. know, like patriarch basically culture the woman have to be at home and, and and you know like looking after the kids she need to be a mom before 30 otherwise it's a disaster it's et cetera, et cetera, yeah. that I think that I have that inside of myself or my limiting beliefs my inner critic for so many years and when I start digging into my subconscious and everything came out it came out like a lioness. Like, <laughs> I want to help all these amazing women to take this incredible power that they have inside and become mm. whatever they want to become and not being judged and, and put it on a side by this society. And this is the way it is. So, yeah. Yeah, it's, we're so put in a box, aren't we? I mean, things are changing. I can see it, but... I feel like, especially women, it's been like you can be seen but not heard kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and in in a culture, you know, like in Spain, especially I guess when you were younger, like our parents' generation, it was much more present than it is now. You know, of how like yeah, things got things are evolving, but it's yeah. still there. Huh? Yeah, it's, it's still there. Yeah, it's still there. Minds. Yeah, I think it's DNA and. Um, you know, that unconscious mind. And that's what I decided actually to dig so much and study so much um, NLP and, and hypnosis, because I realized that when you speak to, from your unconscious mind into someone else's unconscious mind, 
you get much more. You get much more information because you need to be you need to make people aware of yeah. what's really going on inside themselves. Yeah, and how they feel. Talk mm-hmm. to, talk to me a bit about NLP. Like what um, how does that change our mindset? I don't really have any idea about NLP, so I'd just love to know some more. It's, it's difficult, huh? <laughs> <laughs> It's not an easy thing to explain. Actually, it took me, um, and I still, I change the words every time that I speak about NLP. Because um, NLP is like, um, it's very, it's an inclusive term that uh-huh. can be very difficult to define, actually. It stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming. Uh-huh. And it's in essence an examination of how people create their own reality. Okay. Mm-hmm. It looks at how our thoughts, our words, the words we use, and our emotions interact to create our individual experiences of the world, okay? Yeah. Let's say the focus is in the words that we choose. And then um, as NLP coach, you can study those words and the emotions that come from them and figure out the way to help you, the way to unblock you, the way to stop your suffering, okay? How you change those thoughts those feelings and those behaviors actually is the way that we do by using those words. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. So in a typical session, how would it, how would that work? So we go through to um, a lot of, I mean, a session can be very, very different from one to another. Yeah, of course. What do you need? So right. um, to start with, I need to know, I need to understand what's going on with you. What do you need from me? Okay. What can I do for you? And depending on what you need in your life, I mean, my experience, my my niche, let's say, is to empower the woman to take the strength out of them, to take those limiting beliefs out of their mind and to make them see the strength and how amazing things they can do mm-hmm. and probably set up their own businesses. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah sorry. So it just depends on like each individual person how how that yes. session goes. Yes. Yeah. What do you need? So yeah. we have put it up by being very clear about the goal and the vision that you have. Mm-hmm. Without a clear goal and without a vision, it's impossible for you to carry on, right? Because right. you don't know where you're going to. So that's how we will start the coaching session. But then if we realize that we have some emotion that is stuck in there, if it's something that is really scaring you or blocking you to move forward, we can actually do a session with uh, hypnosis, which is not the traditional hypnosis you see on TV. You know, those kind of like laugh and stock thing. It's basically <laughs> put you in trance with, uh, with, with, um, with your breathing, with my word, to put you in a very relaxed motion mm-hmm. and then actually start talking to your subconscious mind. Right, yeah. And change, what we do is we change your emotion, your negative emotion, and we change them for positive emotions Hmm. and then anchor that emotion. So when you come out of the session, actually, you do have that that good emotion that is going to produce a better thought, a better act, you know, a better activation and a better result. Yeah, amazing. I love, I lo- yeah, absolutely. I love hypnotherapy. I just, I've only done it a few times, but I just find it so powerful. Mm-hmm. I've never experienced NLP, but it, it fascinates me how we, how like we have the ability with guidance of someone else to actually change our thought process and our mindset. It's fascinating. Yeah. yeah. So I know you talk a lot about imposter syndrome. Like, I've, you know, I follow you on Instagram and, and all the other you know, on the internet, online. And you talk a lot about imposter syndrome. Now, why do you think that women, in, we suffer more with imposter syndrome? Um, so basically, um, we have 80,000, a minimum of 80,000 thoughts a day. Mm-hmm. which is a lot. Yes, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. You know, we're like, do, 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 thinking all day. Obviously, we do not process even, I don't know, like 10% of them. Yeah. Most of them are on autopilot and most of them are unconscious, basically. Right. Yeah. So 90%, 95%, research says that 95% of those thoughts in women are negative. 
95 percent 95 percent exactly oh my god and that that's is i mean probably that's for for another conversation why because i have a scientific <laughs> a very scientific explanation difficult one i have to say because you know it talks a lot about neurotransmitter hormones etc cetera, etc cetera, but it wow. does a, a base on it but 95 percent. so when it comes to negative thoughts it's everything interlinked right you're yes. interlinked in a critic with your limiting beliefs and your imposter syndrome basically the imposter syndrome is to feel that you're not enough that's what it is i mean yeah. you can put a nice work on it but it's basically <laughs> you're just not good enough you're a fraud and people are actually going to find you out one day you know one day they're going to find out that you look that you're doing something, but you have no idea what you're doing. And that is on your mind. It keeps, yeah. telling, you, it keeps telling you, it keeps telling you. Yeah, it's fascinating to me because I saw that you talked about how you felt, you know, the imposter syndrome. And like, I, my impression of you has always been this incredible, like confident woman, like very like ambitious and, you know, pow- like very empowered. So when I heard you talk about that, I was like, wow, Pilar, like, like I was really surprised. And, you know, why do you think like there's this imbalance, you know, of like the outer is like comes across very confident, but then the, on the inside, you know, we don't feel that way because mm. some people find it very difficult to even like kind of act that way, don't they? So I just found it so interesting how you're, you know, how you appeared to me and, you know, a, everyone else, this powerful, strong woman when really inside you felt like, you know, you you were an imposter. Mm-hmm. What do you feel was going on there that, that made so, you feel um, like that? I didn't know what was going on, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> I thought it was something, basically I was, you know, like um, faking it. Well, not faking it because I do the job and I was doing an amazing job. I know that, you yeah. know, I've been very successful in my career in fashion. And uh, obviously I was doing a good job, but I was feeling that I was not that good. And right. at some point you want to find me. It's very basic. I mean, when I started starting coaching and when I have my own coach for a couple of years and I was working on that, I had to work a lot on myself to, to discover these things, which basically it's a mix of factors. So number one, I never allowed myself to be vulnerable. Mm. To me, being vulnerable was a weakness, was for weak people, which yeah. is a huge mistake. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. Something that no one should really think. I mean, being vulnerable is being authentic and show yourself, not only by your real voice, but at the same time to show respect for yourself and for your boundaries and your values. And then yeah. it's when you actually become confident. Yeah, and powerful, yeah. Absolutely. When I felt that way, it's because I knew that I was not showing myself truly. Hmm. I was doing whatever people were, were telling me to do. I like it or not. Yeah. Probably I was doing a lot of things that I was not happy with. Probably I was... Um, you know, like following rules in the corporate world that I hated and I was still doing it. And all of that is when it comes that, you know, that feeling that you're not good enough, that you're just not doing because you don't feel aligned with yourself. Yeah. It's not balance inside of you. You're faking it. And it's not that I'm faking my job. No, no. Hmm. It's me. Yeah. You know, you are. Exactly. Hmm. To tell my boss, this is bullshit. I don't like it. I'm not doing it. And instead of that, you miss all your best friend's weddings. You miss your family. You actually say that the coolest thing is to just be a career woman and do not get married, do not have kids because that is weakness, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a huge ball of things. Yeah, 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 absolutely. That, I'm feeling that you know, it's, it's not you, it's not your life. Yeah, and then yeah. it loads and you burn out. Yeah. Is there one moment that you can pinpoint when you were like, that's it now? Like, or is it just like a sequence of things that happened that made you realize, okay, I need to change. Like I need to make, you know, a different life decision, career Mm. decision. I mean, probably was a, not a moment, but a life moment that actually is like, what am I doing? So after 12 years, there's a very, 
toxic relationship, which is actually, again, this is me vulnerable here because it's very difficult for me to talk about this. But after 12 years with a very toxic relationship that we both didn't want to leave for whatever sick reasons. Um, and realizing that looking back, I was 45. I had not nearby what I wanted to be. I wasn't happy. I didn't have the life that I dreamed for myself. I didn't have the freedom. I didn't have the friends, nothing, because I was just working, working, working. And I realized that, oh my God, what's going on here? So the first thing was just to end up this toxic relationship. Thanks God, six months after that, I was already dating my partner in life right now. Mm -hmm. And only five months into the relation, we decided to have a baby. Wow. So that's me all my life saying, you know, super executive, children are for other people, for the weakness. And then it's like, this is exactly what I want. I was able to, or, you know, to vocalize that I wanted to be a mom. Wow. And that was great. Yeah, that was not for the weakness, you know. No, you no, no, yeah. a mom and an amazing CEO and executive. Yeah, I allowed myself finally to do that, so I became mom at forty six. Wow, so, um, you know that's something that although I don't like about talking about my age, <laughs> but it's huge part of what I am at the moment, and I think that I'm using it to inspire other women to know that there is so much. At the end of the tunnel, so much light. And if I can't do it, then anybody can. Anybody can. Yeah, thank you, Pilar, for your vulnerability. It's And like you said, it's so important to share because then that helps inspire other women in this case to, you know, you know, if someone else can do it, then I can do it as well. And I think, you know, we talked about society and, it's, and how it's limiting. And also, for me, like I turned 40, not, yeah, last year or the year before. I can't remember now. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> but and I was like I never was bothered about age but I turned 40 and then I was like oh 40 now kind of like life sh maybe shouldn't be looking how it is like I should be doing this I should have this I should and then I was like hang on a minute like you should just be doing what makes you feel happy and I haven't had kids I'm not planning to have them at the moment anyway <laughs> um I'm but it's really inspiring to hear another woman having a child at 46 because I know a lot of people think, or women especially think after 40, that, like, that's it now. Like, um, what's that phrase in, in Spanish? It's like um, when you've gone over a certain age. Te pasado la arroz o algo así. It's like, oh, God. So it's really inspiring. Science is amazing these days. There's so much advancement, so no... You can have children at 53, 55, no problem. Wow. <laughs> for wow. Sure. If you want to, if you want to, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you talk a lot about, you know, living fearlessly. Yeah. What does that mean to you? What's living fearlessly, Pilar? Um, basically, all the things that I discovered I was not able to talk, to, to talk about in the past to embrace mm -hmm. for when I was saying my culture, you know, that the way that I was my upbringing, um, to be able to embrace that and say aloud and use it to work on it and to, to make a business out of it and to help other women to do it. This is what is giving me this um, empower and this fearless way of living. Imagine I decided to, that's kind of funny. I said, the American coach friend of mine, she actually told me the other day, like you came out of the woo-woo wardrobe, you know, like <laughs> but the woo-woo wardrobe, which is basically things that if I, I always spoke about these things when I was a kid, but I was always shut down because I love to talk about energy, crystals, meditation, the power of the universe, mm. manifestation. I was talking about magic. I was talking about reading your hand, tarot, you know, all these energies that always attract me like crazy. And I was just, you know, 15, 16 years old, but I was not allowed to speak about it because I was a weirdo. <laughs> yeah. Hey, look at you, like you're a weirdo. So I was sort of like hidden in my woo -woo wardrobe for what, 30 years? Right. And I realized that's it. 
you know, if I want to go to a cacao ceremony and cry because all the emotions that come out of that ceremony and I want to say it aloud, I will. Mm. And I don't care if people, you know, think that I'm a weirdo or, you know, there's like, because living in Ibiza is kind of normal, right? But when uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Ibiza, yeah. You go back to Madrid, when you go back to Cadiz, actually, the south of Spain, it's not that common. Um, <laughs> it's not common. Yeah. But the way that you actually, I realized that the way that I say it with, you know, with conviction and with all the goodness that comes out of it, you make people intrigued. Oh, absolutely. So it's not that, it's yeah. not that uh, you know, like she does weird ceremonies in the middle of the forest in Ibiza. Yes, we do, actually. Yeah. But um, it is actually quite empowered. And I think that coming out of fiercely about it is what it makes me stronger every single day. Leaving a corporate job with a massive paycheck at the end of the month and decide to do it on your own you have to be very patient at the beginning. You have to be very yeah. consistent. You have to unlearn, new, you know, what you learned before. You have to make new habits. Your brain wants to keep you safe. Yeah. So my brain was telling me I was crazy for the first few months. Like, what are you doing? If you carry on doing this, you're going to die because your brain wants to keep you safe. Not happy. Yes, safe. Just, just so, safe. Yeah. Not to die. So, you know, I have to work a lot on all these things. And I think that that fear, it needs to be out of my way. I need to jump out of the uh, uncomfort zone, basically, and be very comfortable being uncomfortable all the time and facing the fear. The fear will not go. It will always stay there. Yeah. But you, come up, you, you you learn how to deal with it and you know how to make the most out of it. And sometimes you say, you know, sit here. I can't see you. I know you're nervous. Sit next to me. Stay there. Yeah, but stay put. Carry on doing my thing, okay? Just like, yeah. do not bother me. Uh, and that's it, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. The f- fear is, yeah. Fear is always there, like you said. But I think as well, it's like kind of learning to befriend. Yeah our fears and like know that on the other side of that fear is something magical and and I think for me living fearlessly is really being authentic like being who you are you know and like you said honoring and embracing that you you know you love to go to cacao ceremonies and all these other things and and you know being talking about it with being natural to people that maybe you know I've never done anything like that before or maybe it could be quite, you know, against these kind of things. Yeah. And, like, just being able to be who you are and getting to a point where, you know, what other people think doesn't, you know, bother you. It's like – and you have, like, this fire inside of you that – you know, and, and also, like you said, running your own business, leaving an amazing corporate job that paid you really well and just, you know – going off on your own and doing your own thing. Like for me, it's been a massive spiritual journey of, like you said, unlearning, learning, um, and just becoming more of who I am and just like embracing every part of me. So I think it's, it's, it's so powerful when you can really just honor who you are. Right. Yeah, exactly. With, with, with truth to you. Yeah. And, when you actually work in this in this world that we work, you need to be you need to be visible. Okay, you need to be visible and you need to be heard. And if you are not truth, your clients will know. Yeah, they'll pick up like this. I mean, yeah. if your energy is not a true energy, hmm. they will see it. They will feel it, and then you won't be able to help them. Yeah, and to me. When I finish my, like my, my, I don't know, like six months coaching programs or three months coaching program with my, with my clients and see them blossom and, and happy and doing things, that's the most important thing. And that gives me the courage to carry on being myself and to carry on, don't give a shit about what people judge because I yeah. still do they still do like, you know, oh, you used to be this amazing uh, corporate high flyer um, executive in retail. I was like, well, now I'm an amazing coach who actually helps those executives to get their shit together. 
Yeah. So, you know, I'm still there. I am doing a much better job in my eyes and in my heart, which is incredible. So, yeah. Yeah, and because you're more aligned. So when we're aligned, you know, from the inside out, we we feel happier in general, right? And so that's when, like, like you said, we feel more joyous, more energetic, more mm-hmm. authentic. And that's when things come to us. The universe brings us all this magical stuff because we're actually honoring who we are and 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 aligned, you know. So I wanted to ask you a question actually about, you know, as we've both worked in fashion and I still do, how do you feel like style influences how women feel about themselves? Like how does the clothes you wear change the way you feel about yourself? To me, it's super important. I mean, fashion was always important, but even now it's what gives me power. And I don't dress. I mean, obviously I dress for my clients, I dress for my people, but mainly I dress for myself. It does give me so much power when I wear something. I'm very chameleonic. I like to actually to, to, uh, to play with my style. Sometimes I'm a rock mom, sometimes I'm <laughs> dressy, sometimes I'm a sexy one. You know, like sometimes I look like a teenager with torn jeans and stuff like that. So actually, I love that. I work in so many different fashion companies that I became very chameleonic. And I still love it. Yeah. It gives so much power to become what I want to become and what I want to transmit with my clothes. I transmit a lot with my clothes. And I think I give very powerful messages when I go around with the way that I actually look. And that helps me. Yeah. And yeah. and it's very, very important. And to me, looking after myself, going to, you know, hairdresser, makeup, the way that I dress, uh, I style my things together and um, I'm spending money on my face. Hey, hello, you know, 49. So do your touch up. It's very, very important. So I'm sorry, but not only because I work with my mind and I cultivate my mind, that's a mint that I can actually do all this material things that empower me as well absolutely yeah Yeah, absolutely they're tools all of them are tools to help us feel better and I think for me the more I look after myself like I exercise I eat well I do my yoga my meditation I have some face massages you know whatever I want to do and I I wear clothes that make me feel empowered and make me feel good I can really feel the difference when I don't do those things and And I always say to my clients, don't ask yourself how you feel each day when you go to get dressed. Ask yourself how you want to feel Mm -hmm. because then you will choose the right clothes to make you feel more empowered and, you know, more confident or whatever. Because a lot of people, they say, oh, yeah, I just, you know, I dress for how I feel and, like, often I'm just in, like, you know – jeans or even because of the pandemic and working from home a lot of people like oh just jogging bottoms and like I have a client who she said to me that I've been two years in jogging bottoms and t-shirts and she's like I really need to change now and it's like the clothes are so powerful but I think they're so underestimated because people often think oh well fashion's frivolous um and things like that I mean we won't go down the road of you know the whole fashion industry but it's like Fashion is a tool. Style is a tool for you to, you know, feel more powerful. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's a tool. And then we use tools every single day for everything, to feel better, to make money, to sell more. So it's just one of the tools that is within our reach to use it. And then, you know, I like pretty things. I like to go on holidays I like to live in a nice environment I like beautiful houses and I like beautiful clothes that mm. make me feel good so when it comes to go to a Punta Cana on holidays no one will judge it but when it comes to you know looking the part every day like oh look at you, you yeah know, with your clothes <laughs> it's exactly the same thing it's exactly the same thing it makes me feel as good sometimes I need to dress amazing sometimes I need to go on holidays to Punta Cana yeah yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, Pilot, if there was anything you could say to your 16-year-old self, imagine you're walking down the street and you meet up with your 16-year-old self, what would you tell her? 
16, I was a troublemaker by that time. I was already, you know, fiery person. <laughs> Very much a rebel. Yeah. Um, I think one of the most important thing, and um, this is going to be, again, me being vulnerable, but I think it really will open people's minds. Um, basically looking, encourage this person to have a growing mindset. Mm. Not let anybody to tell you that you can't do something. Don't allow them. In my school, the teachers were bullies, basically. They were bullies with the, with the kids. We were all girls, actually. And I perfectly remember them judging us to not be good on this, not good on that. And then, you know, basically bullied those people. That is in your mind. That mm. it became a big part of my inner critic, of my limiting beliefs. So instead of just looking into your weaknesses, just look into your strengths and tell that child, I will tell that child that, like, you can do anything you want with effort. I'm not saying it's, you know, like it's coming out of the sky, but if you concentrate, if you focus on something, you will get it. You will get there. You just need to be consistent and work for it. Do not throw the towel because someone is telling you you're not good enough. That will be like the main one. I'm going to coach. That will be- <laughs> yeah. yes. If I had the opportunity to have a coach at my 16, oh my God. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Absolutely. I think I, I always think about this because of, you know, obviously I teach yoga as well. And I'm like, I wish I'd done yoga like when I was 12 mm. or at the earliest age possible. I wish I was taught how to do yoga meditation because I think it would have helped me a lot. I mean, I don't regret anything that's happened to me. It's part of my life's journey yeah. and I'm grateful for all the learning experiences but, you know, I wish that that was part of, like, the school system. Well, I know yeah. it is more now, but, yeah, I think – and coaching, I mean, it's incredible, isn't it? It yeah. really is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a pity that um, the, the the way that coaching is is seen and, and showed and organised in, in the world, mainly in Spain, I have to say mm. – it's not a realistic picture because I guess I'm not saying that you need to be um, control or, or make it a science or anything. I'm not saying that. I mean, I, I couldn't care less about that, but it's true that the way that people see it, it still sees this um, um, Encanta Mañanas, you know, like. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's like, um, oh God, what's the word in English? It's like someone's, it's like, um, Someone's kind of just making it up almost. It's like, exactly. yeah. And then they don't really know the power of it. I mean, the good thing about me is like, I'm also a psychologist. So I can take from both, you know, I can talk from both sizes. Like, you know, I can talk from, from what a psychology does in, in therapy and what a coach do in sessions. And right. I can tell you like the way that a coach works is much more committed to that client than any single um, psychology session. I mean, there are different type of people. I mean, you don't, if you need a psychology, then you do need a psychology. Mm. But sometimes people get mixed. Yeah. Like, oh, you don't are uh, a psychology, then I don't need you. Then maybe I can help you better. Maybe what you need is, is me as a coach because our commitment is totally different. Yeah. And I think there's still a lot of misunderstanding about what we do and how prepared we are actually. Yeah. And you know what? I think that people don't realize the value of having a coach and Mm. they think it's really expensive and they don't understand the investment and what it means to invest in ourselves. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, when you spend a certain amount of money, people think that you should have something tangible, but it's like. It's like marketing in fashion. Yeah. You you have this huge budget, like 5 million euros (laughs) for a campaign like out of band campaign, 15 days, 5 million euros. And me, retailer, is like, oh my God, there's so much money. I could, you know, do so many other things with it. Right. And then you don't realize actually that the benefits are intangible, but they're going to be there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Be there for sure. It's yeah. an investment in you. 
didn't want to invest in you, then fine, go ahead on your own. And then, you know, you have the guarantee that you actually have someone there for you, cheering you, guiding you, educating you, and ensure that you meet your goals. That is amazing. I mean, I wish I had one. I mean, obviously I had my coach for sure. I can't live without her. Yeah. But uh, I really wish I had that earlier in my life. Yeah, that would be very powerful. Yeah, and someone holding you accountable and, like you said, cheering you on and really encouraging you to, like, keep following your dreams. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Pilar, thank you so much. It's been wonderful reconnecting with you and chatting to you about all these interesting things from woo woo to NLP (laughs) coaching fashion (laughs) are there any last words of wisdom you would like to leave with our listeners today um to me it's about really believing yourself and it sounds corny but it's not it's reality you really dig deeper inside yourself and realize that you can do anything you want. You just need to find that emotion, that first emotion that will give you the courage to start. Once you start, then you need to carry on. But finding that emotion to give you that hope, to give you that energy Hmm. to go for what you want is super important. So if you can actually find that, to believe in yourself that you can find it, you can change your world totally. And you can do it. Anybody can do it. Honestly, it's not magic. It's work with yourself. Absolutely. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you online? So at the moment, I am on Instagram, Pilar Lacave Coach. Mm -hmm. And you can actually reach me there. I have a bio where you can book your discovery session with me. Um, goes into my Calendly and then we can actually book 30 minutes to one hour to have a chat to see where are you at, where do you want to be and if we are a good fit together and then we'll take it from there. At the moment, I work with um, one-to-one clients in programs of six months. So um, I found that that's the most powerful thing to work nice. at the moment and you know, that's the way it is. Amazing. Thank you so much, Pilar. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you to all our listeners. Please follow Pilar on Instagram. She does some great reels and things like that. She's got great tips. Thank you for being here and have a wonderful day. You too. Ciao. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please subscribe to the Loose Stokes podcast. Rate and review in the Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're tuning in from. I'd be so grateful. Also, check out the show notes to learn more about my guest and learn more about me on my website, www.loustokes.com. Until next time, be inspired, take action, and become your own icon.